Hi, I'm Dr. Joel Student, a board-certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon since 1991. Half my practice involves cosmetic surgery of the breast. So as you can imagine, I've had a lot of questions about breast implant-associated ALCL. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you an overview of the issue, what to look out for, what to expect, and what the recommendations are according to the FDA and the manufacturers of breast implants. BIA-ALCL stands for Breast Implant Associated Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma. It's a type of cancer that's very rare, and interestingly, it's not a breast cancer. This is a cancer of the scar tissue around the implant. Anytime you put a foreign body in you, whether it's a knee joint or heart valve or a breast implant, your body forms a wall of scar tissue around it that's normally soft, thin, and you can't feel it. But just like one little kid makes a bad scar in their chin when they cut their chin and the next little kid doesn't, you make unpredictable scar tissue inside around your breast implant. And that scar tissue is called a scar capsule. Every once in a while, somebody overforms that scar tissue and that leads to a hard breast that can ride high. Sometimes you have to take that scar tissue out, called a capsulectomy. This, on the other hand, is a cancer that forms in that scar tissue. Mostly associated with textured implants, the cancer manifests itself as either a lump, a swelling of the breast because of a collection of fluid around the implant, a bad rash over the breast, or sometimes pain. If any of these things happen, the doctor needs to do some testing and make sure that this rare condition hasn't affected your breast implant. The original breast implants were smooth on the outside. But it became apparent that the most common complication of breast implants was not cancer, was not autoimmune disease, but in fact was an overformation of that scar capsule that I just mentioned. So many years ago, it was hypothesized that if you make the outside of the implant rough, it would interfere with the formation of that scar tissue. So textured implants were used either in people that had scar tissue formation when that scar tissue was being taken out and the implants were replaced, or some doctors used them right from the start. Many of us felt that the textured surface really didn't help at all. And in my practice, I only used textured implants when somebody had a scar capsule that formed and that capsule had to be removed and we were replacing the implants. I even stopped doing that about 10 years ago because I didn't think that it worked. Also, there were different types of textured implants. The Allergan implants, which are in question in the recall recommended by the FDA, used a different process to make the texture on the outside than the Mentor Johnson & Johnson implants. It's felt that specifically those Allergan implants carry a high risk of BIA-ALCL. Whether you have silicone or saline implants makes no difference when it comes to the formation of breast implant-associated ALCL. Instead, it's the shell on the outside of the implant. It's extraordinarily rare to find this problem in people with smooth implants. It's even rare with textured implants. We do know, however, that the Allergan BioCell carries a much higher risk than other textured implants. Smooth breast implants remain very safe devices. According to an FDA report released July 6, 2019, there are no confirmed cases of people getting BIA ALCL if they had smooth implants, with no history of having had textured implants in the past. If you already have breast implants, we need a little bit more of a discussion. While the FDA says that Breast implants should not be considered lifetime devices. My experience over 20 years in thousands of breast implants is that most people last a very long time without touching their breast implants and have no problems. From 1978 to 86, they made cold cured shells where the silicone inside the implant actually melted the shell and almost all of them failed by 10 years. That's why people would say you had to change your implants every 10 years. After 1986, they changed the way they make the shell, and I find that it's very unusual for implants to break, but obviously not impossible. So anybody that gets breast implants should realize there is a possibility they'll have to change them, but there's no change your tires every 10 years rule. That's a myth. 
If you already have smooth implants, there's certainly no reason to change them. The risk of BIA ALCL associated with smooth implants is extraordinarily low. Like everybody else, you should have mammograms and sonograms as directed by your doctor and get checked if there's anything at all that you find that's unusual. If you have textured implants and you have no problem, the current FDA recommendation is not to change them, just be more vigilant. While no surgery is without risk, in my practice, breast surgery takes approximately a half an hour. It is done under light anesthesia like a colonoscopy, and it's usually surgery Wednesday and back to work in less than a week. It's a relatively low-risk procedure. However, you have to remember that low risk doesn't mean no risk. And in any surgery, you have to weigh the risks versus the benefits. And the FDA is recommending that the risk-benefit ratio falls in favor of just being vigilant and not changing the implant. That said, I have several patients in my practice that have decided they just don't want to live worrying about the risk of having textured implants in their body. It's very tempting to say, why don't we just take all the textured implants out and replace them with smooth implants. Again, we turn to the risk-benefit ratio. While the risk of the surgery itself is relatively low when it comes to surgeries, remember that every time you open that Pandora's box, the possibility of capsular contracture or a deforming scar tissue around the implant starts over again. And so you do have a risk when you go in there that your body forms excess scar tissue, and that excess scar tissue is not related to the formation of breast implant-associated ALCL, it's cosmetic. So this becomes a very individual decision. The recommendation right now is to leave the textured implant alone, even with the Allergan BioCell implant. The risk-benefit ratio, again, is the formation of scar tissue and the low risk of surgery if we decide to go and open that Pandora's box, weighed against peace of mind in not having a textured implant in your body. Most of my patients have elected to just keep their implants and be vigilant. Again though, very individual decision. So let's go through some concrete recommendations. If you're thinking about getting breast implants, simply make sure that you're getting smooth implants. The risk of breast implant-associated ALCL is extraordinarily low with smooth implants. If you already have smooth implants, just follow your doctor's recommendation for screening. Self-exams, mammograms, and sonograms when appropriate, and occasionally an MRI might be recommended. If, on the other hand, you already have textured implants, you should see a doctor with vast experience examining breasts with breast implants. This is a very individual decision. In the vast majority of cases, the recommendation is still going to be to leave your implants alone and be vigilant. That, however, is something that's decided on a case-by-case -case basis after extensive discussion. I hope this has helped you.